And welcome back to Sunday Square Off and our Decision 2020 special. We're exactly one year away from Election Day, November 3rd, 2020. Today we're setting the table with data to help you understand how Arizona and Maricopa County in particular could vote. We're joined by Josh Zaragoza, Vice President of Digital Strategy and Data Analytics at Phoenix-based Javelina, and Paul Benz, Senior VP of Research and Strategy at Phoenix-based High Ground Consulting. So let's get back to the numbers and drill down on the Latino vote. These are some numbers you brought us, Josh. Over the last decade, the Latino share of the Arizona electorate has almost doubled from 11% in 2010 to a projected 19.5% next year. Josh, those are your numbers and make one thing clear. Are those the actual voters, people who show up at the polls or just the share of the, all the registered voters? That is a share of the, ele the electorate. So of, of, of everyone that turns out in the election, they're rep they've represented, like you mentioned, in 2010, 20 11%, and then have gone to 2018 to 18%. And I project, um, I know you had 19.5, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say we hit 20% for the first time um, in Arizona history as a share of the electorate, so a fifth of the electorate. Um, and so tell us about this electorate. Older, younger, Democrat, Republican, Independent? Well, uh, largely about 60% are Democrat. Um, about 30% of the Latino vote actually still goes to Republicans. In fact, in, 28, uh, in 2018, 30% went to the Republican. And as Paul noted, as, as uh, we're seeing an influx of younger voters, um, many of those are Latinos. And, and I think it's going to be critical how we speak to them to turn them out. Um, you know, and a lot, of, a lot of these Latino voters reside in districts that are not competitive, so it's going to require investment and it's going to require a message. In fact, a study just shows when you speak to Latinos, you cannot um, note that your, every vote counts, you know, um, you know, your district hasn't turned out, so your, your, your vote's even more critical. You actually have to do a group think and, and talk about how everyone's turning out. And, and you need to turn out with them. And so uh, you and I had talked about the top issues in Arizona mm -hmm. this year. What are they? The top two issues, and they're basically virtually tied right now, is education and immigration at 33%. And I think one of the pitfalls is that when you talk to Latino voters, often everyone assumes you should just talk immigration issues to them. But what we found from our research is that they are a high number of Latinos care about the education issues, they care about health care and other issues as well. So it, it does not help a campaign just to focus on one singular issue. Very different from 2010. Absolutely. Um, the biggest mistake strategists make is thinking that Latinos are monolithic. And as Paul just noted, in 2018, health care was, in terms of federal races, was at the top of their priorities. And then uh, statewide, it was education. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and there's many Latinos that, that are in favor of the Second Amendment and, and you know, and our gun owners. There are many that are, are pro-life. So you have to be very careful in, in communicating with them and crafting them and not treating them... Um, you know, as, as one large group and, and as individuals instead. I want to go back to something you brought up earlier, the LD17 and the idea of purple Maricopa County. Uh, Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego said recently the road to the White House runs through Maricopa County. We're the largest county in the state. I think you pointed out Maricopa County is accounting for a much larger share of the, uh, of the Arizona vote. So how real is this? Because I know there are doubters up, out there about purple Maricopa County. We've talked before about the purple loop, North Valley pockets going purple, Southeast Valley pockets going purple. Is that real? Is that something that could play out again in 2020? I definitely think there are portions of Maricopa County that are purple. I don't think it's all of it, but you look at high wage job corridors, high wealth corridors, you look at the places where Intel and other folks are bringing in people from other states, those, those areas are definitely changing. LD17 is one, LD18. But I think there's a, there are big significant portions of Maricopa County that are still red. Congressman Biggs is the chairman of the Freedom Caucus for a reason. He is in a plus 22 Republican advantage congressional district, and that's almost exclusively Maricopa County. Uh, Senator or Congresswoman Lesko is in the same boat. Hers is plus 25, I believe, in CD4 or CD8 in the Northwest Valley. So there's significant pockets that have uh, changed very much so, but there are still very conservative areas in Maricopa County. Okay. I want to end uh, with a couple final thoughts here. Uh, digest all the data. Tell us what you think, how campaigns need to shape their strategy. And I'm talking Trump, the Senate camp, the presidential, the Senate campaigns, how they need to shape their strategy given the numbers we're seeing in 2020. So I, I think the, you look to Senator Sinema and how successful 
successful she was in 2018. She spoke to broad audiences. I think female voters, I think independent, unaffiliated voters are the two biggest blocks that are going to make up this election. And I think how you communicate with them is going to be critically important. How uh, independents view the impeachment proceedings is going to be critically important. And we haven't talked much about impeachment, so feel free to, uh, same question for you, feel free, Josh, feel free to bring that up because it's, we don't know how it's going to play out, but it, it's out there. Well, in terms of strategy, I think Democrats always have to do a little more than Republicans here, and we have to not only uh, mobilize our voters and, and capture a significant share of independents, but we have to persuade at least 15% of Republicans, you know, if you want to win statewide here. And where we're going to be successful, where campaigns need to focus on our uh, suburban educated college, you know, women, uh, Republican women. And what is not talked about, but we're also seeing a, win, uh, a swing towards Democrats by women suburban women that didn't go to college and and they're being focused on by democrats and you'll see that this cycle in in 2020 as far as impeachment goes i think that um it remains to be seen how it's going to impact in, in the past um putting a, a president through impeachment has mobilized the other side or the, the side of the president so it could not bode well for democrats in that case at the same time if they if we were to get enough votes in the senate um, I think it could ultimately damage the Republicans if there's going to be a lot of internal fractions. So. All right, Josh Zaragoza, Paul Benz, thanks so much for joining us. Great information.